I don't even have my coffee. How can I do this tag but if I don't have my coffee? Alright. Hey ho, my name is Joe, and today I am doing a book tag. I know, I do a lot of book tags, but this one I felt like was appropriate for me because I am your total typical coffee loving book addict. And yeah, so hey ho, my name is Joe. Welcome back or welcome to my channel if you are new here. My name is Joanna. I refer to myself here as Joe, right on this booktube community. And yes, I love coffee, I love books, and I have a, what, what was it called again? Coffee book, the coffee book tag. So I figured, hey, you know what? Coffee is like my thing. I love anything coffee and I love books. So hey, whoever created this tag, thank you. This is awesome. I will leave any information that I found on this book tag down in the description below as well as the questions if you wanted to go ahead and do this tag. I would actually love to see break even books do this one and anybody else that I tag will actually be listed down below so if your name is there I would love to see your video and please leave your video down below. And if there's any books on this list that I mention that you think I might like a different book based on that book or whatever please leave a comment down below and don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see more random content by me. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. There are eight questions so I'm going to be at work in about an hour and a half so I don't have much time to record. So let's jump in. First question is black. Name, some, name a series that's tough to get into but has a lot of hardcore fans. A series that's really hard to get into I would definitely, I don't know, I have to think about this one for a minute. Um, honestly, I would I would have to go with the Marked series or the House of Night series. I had a really hard time getting into the first one. The first one was, it was okay, but then the second one moved slowly. But, but then by the time it got to the middle of the second book, it really picked up and by the time I got to the third book, I, it, the world opened up to this ginormous community. <laughs> I have a crazy cat. And the cat and the dog are chasing each other. They always do this when I go to record a video. Anyway. But by the time I got to the third book, the community did open up and I found a lot of people talking about this series and it just, there's a lot of hardcore fans on it that I feel like, but if you haven't picked up this series, I actually would recommend it. But like I said, the first book is a little slow, second book picks up about the middle, and then the third book, and then from there it, it picks up quite a bit. Next question. Peppermint Mocha. Look. Name a book that's more popular during the winter or festive time of year. Well, I mean, if, if I had to get technical, I would definitely say, you know, when I think festive, I think snow, I think Christmas, I think Thanksgiving, I think Halloween. Uh, so, I guess my favorite book that I always tend to read around Christmas time. I haven't read it in a few years just because I don't own a copy of it anymore. And that is The Christmas Box by Richard Evans, I think his name is. I'll post a picture of it right here. Uh, this is a wonderful Christmas story on how... There's actually a movie adaptation of it too. But it's a wonderful Christmas story where a man and his wife and his daughter move in with this elderly lady because they have to help take care of her. I don't remember if there was a relationship there like if there was an aunt or a grandmother, or I don't remember if there was a relationship there, but she she teaches them a lot. Like, he goes up into the attic and finds this box that's just beautiful, like, and it looks like Christmas, and, you know, the elderly woman teaches them this, like, life lesson. Like, what was the first gift ever given to baby Jesus? Now, I'm not trying to get all religious here or anything because I'm not really big on religion. I mean, I do 
that's a whole other video, but I do believe in Christianity and whatnot, but I'm not really big on it. But anyway, so she asked, like, what's the first gift that was ever given to baby Jesus? And that's basically what the whole entire book, he's trying to figure out, well, what was his first gift that was given? And he under, uh, he uncovers a bunch of secrets that this woman has, and it's just an overall beautiful story, and I would highly recommend it to anybody who loves a good Christmas story, because this definitely takes a place around Christmas time, and it's just one of those books that I always read, and I think I might actually try to get it on the Kindle this year that way so I can read it again, or I might try to find myself another physical copy, just because I love the book so much, and I haven't read it in a couple of years, and I would really like to. Number three, Hot Chocolate. What is your favorite children's book? Okay, so I feel like this is obviously going to be a given. If you all follow me from the very beginning, you know what my favorite childhood book is. And you actually, you might not even think. Leave a comment down below if you think you know what it is. Just like, pause this video. If you think you know what it is, leave a comment down below. Go back and edit your comment if you are wrong. If you are right, then hey, leave it alone. But otherwise than that, if you are wrong, change your comment on your reaction on what this one is. Now that I think about it. Oh. See, now I'm stuck between two, because I'm really thinking about it. It's not Inkheart, if that's what you're thinking. Even though Inkheart was one of my favorite books when I was a kid, I more or less discovered Inkheart when I was like 15, 16. And the other ones I discovered when I was much younger. Yeah, okay. Alright, so the book that I'm going to go with, with my favorite childhood book, is Chasing Redbird by Sharon Creech. I grew up with Sharon Creech. She was one of my favorite authors. And if you're not familiar with this book, you follow a girl named Zoe? Or am I getting names confused? Or Zoe? Zinnia. That's what it is. You follow a girl named Zinnia who basically is trying to undiscover, uh, rediscover the secrets of her aunt who passed away uh, from a snake bite, I think it went forever correctly. And so she finds this trail, she follows it, and it's just her adventure throughout all that. Sorry, that random meow is Salem and Willow are playing, and it's not that Willow gets rough, it's just, yeah. You should just, some of these days, you guys see these two playing, it's actually really cute. Anyway, so, yeah, this is a wonderful young kid story that just it's easy to follow and just one of my all-time favorites I don't know really know much to say about this just it's one of my all-time favorite childhood books all right number four double shot of espresso name a book that kept you on the edge of your seat from start to finish I'm going to have to go with Haunted Sister by, I can't remember the author, but the picture will be right here. Uh, so this is actually follows a girl who lost her twin sister when she was like three or four or something like that. And then she gets into a car accident and then her sister tries to basically take over her body and take over her life. Like her twin sister who's dead, who comes back and it's all like one twisted mess uh, but it's actually a really really great book and from the time she ended up in the hospital after the accident I was I was hooked I wanted to see what happened and I'm a little disappointed by the ending because I felt like there should have been more to the ending but it's definitely a book I want to reread because I absolutely loved it it was one of those books I read a very very long time ago haven't picked it up ever again and I do own a physical copy of it I just don't have a dust jacket for it so it's just this basic black book. So it's it's not very long either. It's I feel like if I really want to, I could probably finish this in a day again. But it's 
216 pages so it's not very long but definitely one of those books you really should check out because if you love kind of like a little mystery thriller type of thing you would really like this book next is Starbucks name a book that you see everywhere well I mean if we're talking the booktube community the one that I see everywhere is Harry Potter if we're talking like bookstores the one that I've been seeing a lot lately is The Dilemma by B.A. Paris or I've also been seeing a lot of The Diviners lately and the other one that you've been seeing a lot lately is The Ballads of Billards and Snakes. So there's a lot of books out there that you see a lot lately. Uh, I do own The Dilemma and I do own The uh, Ballad of Billards and Snakes. I can never say the title correctly. Uh, but yeah, those two I do own. It's just The Dilemma's over there on the floor because Salem knocked it over and then that one's on my bookshelf. So number six, That Hipster Coffee. Give a book with an indie author a shout out. I honestly don't know. I feel like I don't read a lot of indie authors. I probably do. And if you guys know of any authors that I have possibly read that's an indie author, please leave a comment down below and let me know. If you don't know if I have, go back and watch all my other videos. Might have mentioned one of them somewhere. I don't really pay attention. I mean, this sounds horrible, but I really don't pay attention to authors. I just pay attention more or less to the book because I read any book that's given to me. I read basically anything. Like, that's just who I am. All right, number seven. Oops, I actually got decaf. Name a book that you're expecting more from. Ugh. I'm going to go with The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin. I loved this book. I loved the idea, the concept of it. This might be a spoiler, so just be warned. But it disappointed me because I wanted more on the mental health side of it, I guess. I more or less, uh, it just, it went to their head and... I would like to know why it went to their head. Like, I want to know more about the mental health on it. And it's just, the girl in here, she ended up killing herself. And it's just like, why was she so obsessed with it? And why did she decide her to kill herself on the day that she was supposed to die? I mean, it just doesn't make sense. And there, there there's a more mental health thing there that didn't feel like, I feel like didn't get elaborate in here at all. So yeah, I would like a little bit more on this. Maybe just a little. All right, and the last question, which is question number eight, the perfect blend. Name a book or series that both bitter and sweet, but ultimately satisfying. Hmm, let's see. Perfect blend, ultimately satisfying. Oh gosh, I definitely have to go with the Seven Realms series by Cynthia Williams, Chima. Starts with the Demon King, goes to the Exiled Queen, Grey Wolf Throne, and the Crimson Crown. Absolutely loved this series. This is actually one of my all-time favorite series, which I will talk about in probably another video relatively soon. But it started off so bitter, so boring. By the time I got to like the middle of this one, I was hooked. And I just could not stop reading it, and I was just so excited to dive into the next one. And, oh, in the end, with the Crimson Crown, it was so satisfying. I was so happy the way it ended. Oh, and I can't wait to dive back into this world. Absolutely love this world. So, yeah. All right, so that is the Coffee Book Challenge. If you made it this far, thank you so, so, so much for watching. Don't forget to check out all my links down below because they are there for you guys because if I am not reading, not recording a video, not at work, or watching something lately on TV, probably on social media, but I'm probably also on social media while I'm watching something. So, again, thank you so much for watching. That's why the links are there. 
don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more random content by me because you know I'm weird, I'm quirky, and random, and post videos at random. So thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time.